Hello. All right, here we are. So um, yes, I am sick. I tested positive. So my husband and I and my son are definitely positive. Um, and so part of me thought that I wouldn't do the class today. Honestly, I thought about not doing it. But, you know, I have like perfect attendance. I don't know what it is about me. My mom has perfect attendance. I just always am a person that shows up. So I thought, you know what? I shouldn't stop doing things because I'm not doing well. It might actually be a good thing to get things to move through my system. So I'm going to do a gentle practice today. Um, and you're going to go at your pace. I'll go at my pace. Hello, Lynn, Stevie. Yeah, I mean, we're getting better. My husband feels better. My son feels better. I think I will get better soon. Um, but I thought this could be actually a good thing because... We shouldn't stop, even if we're not doing well. Um, so that's it. Um, anything in particular that's going on with any of you? Any issues or any extra stress that you're experiencing? I'd love to hear about that, if that is something that you're experiencing. Maybe I'll do this a little up there. All right. So, if there's not anything in particular, then let me go back there and let's start. Let me move back here. Okay. So the physical practice of yoga is for a few aspects, a few reasons. It's to keep our body strong, depending on what stage of life you're in. You're either building, you're in that young phase building, or you're in that phase out of your 40s where you are maintaining or preserving. And so keeping the body flexible and mobile and strong is one aspect. Then there's this deeper aspect of the effect it has in our biochemistry and our physiology and the ability for us to support and help the lymphatic system move because the lymphatic system only moves through movement and massage. And so the, the postures that we do actually help to support immune health because they move the lymphatic fluids. And then when we do certain things, we bend joints, we compress our body, we compress out of the tissues the organs and the tissues, we compress fluids, we move things around. We kind of shake things around or stir things up, so to speak, so that we keep everything flowing and moving. So depending on where you're at, what's going on in your life, you determine what this physical practice will be for you. What are your needs? What do you need to do? So for me today, feeling pretty nasally, having a virus, I am going to Go at my pace, go slower, not use too much body energy to do strong muscular work, but rather focus more on the compression and the bending and the lengthening and the movement of the practice today so that I get things to flow and to heal quicker. So depending on what is your needs of today, when you come into each posture, you either go really deep if you can you push harder away from the ground or whatever posture it is we're doing. You use more muscles in each posture if you're working on strength or you come in a little more gentle. And so making this be about you and your needs for today, using this as the self-care, self-healing practice that it is. So for today's practice, the props you'll need are a strap and a block, and then you'll need a blanket. And I'm going to use a bolster underneath my knees today because I'd like to have a really nice support for my lower back. And so you could put roll blankets or pillows underneath or nothing at all. But I do think that having something underneath the knees seems to be really relaxing for tightness that can develop in the pelvic area, in the low back, in the hips. And if you sit often, we're shortening the muscle, the psoas, the deep muscle that connects the upper and lower body. And that tightness of that muscle can pull 
on the low back and on the hip area. So having a bolster underneath your knees can be really nice. When we go down on the ground, we're gonna do a breathing technique that we're gonna breathe through our lungs using our hands and our body, breathing into our hands and then up to the chest. I'll guide you through a couple and then you'll go on your own and connect to your breath and come very present moment, stimulate parasympathetic nervous system because that is when the body can be in the zone of healing. So really thinking today about placing your body into the zone of healing and using the practice for the intention of healing, whatever that means for you. It could be healing from physical issues or biochemical issues, or it could be healing from feeling weak and fragile and worrying about your balance. And your intention is to get stronger and to get more flexible. That could be healing for you, meaning you're going to do as much as you can in the strength aspect of the practice. So whatever it is, it's your practice. I'll be your guide. You find what works for you. So let's come down onto the ground. Keeping the front of your spine nice and long, whether you have osteoporosis or not. Because the statistics of getting to 65 without bone loss are not very probable for most. 55% of the people over age 50 have bone density loss. And 27% of the people over 65 have osteoporosis. So let's, with awareness, think about the front of our spine when we move. And then when you're here, place the block underneath your legs. <coughs> One thing about coughing when you're sick. When I was in Zurich for my 50th birthday, I had a cold and I took a cough suppressant. <coughs> <coughs> because I was with my friend. Anyway, if you suppress a cough, then you actually keep the stuff stuck and we want everything to flow. So cough if you need to cough. <coughs> and different positions that you'll put your body in will make coughing more prevalent. I noticed this when I was teaching in classes is that when we would come into this relaxation position, it was amazing how that stimulated a cough for so many people. And this was before the pandemic. So people weren't as worried, but they were still worried about getting sick from others. So really interesting body positions and how it affects our internal biochemistry. So move your body side to side so that you get your shoulder blades to be underneath your heart. Finding that nice alignment in your spine that allows for more openness in the upper chest to bring in oxygen, to get that exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen. So important for keeping the acidity, pH level in the body helps. It's one of the big parts of detoxification. So get yourself nice and comfortable. Pardon my coughs. <coughs> For what it's worth, I have not been coughing much today. <laughs> so, might be the body position. So, close your eyes, noticing the sounds that exist around you. Let your hands rest on your belly. And let yourself arrive. Noticing the sounds from the different directions. Where are they coming from? Are they behind you, beside you, the right side, the left side? Then if you have a really quiet environment, maybe at a home, can you notice the sounds of clocks or any electronics?
Close your mouth, breathe in and out through your nose. Begin to restrict your throat so you actually hear or notice a whispering that takes place in the throat. Then follow the next few breaths into your belly. And let your belly rise so you feel your hands move. And then actually begin to breathe in to your spine, down to your tailbone, to feel your belly rise with breath. So filling up your belly from the back to the front. Eyes are closed but visualizing and noticing the path of the breath through the nostrils, down the spine to the tailbone, and then feel the whole belly fill up, feel that pressure that's created with the inhale. Feel your hands rise. Then take one of your hands and slide one of your hands up higher. Keep the forearm on the ground or the upper arm on the ground, forearm alongside your body. So there's not a lot of work for your arms here. Then the other hand is on the lower belly, spread your fingers. Take a couple of breaths and see if you can notice where the movement is in your chest and in your whole torso.
And then bring your awareness to your chest. Breathe into the chest so only the hand on the chest moves. And this may be easier to feel and to notice. The default for most of us is the upper chest breath. And then bring your awareness to the belly and start to direct the breath deeper so you feel the hand on the belly move. And keep going so you feel the hand on the belly move and start to pay attention to the hand on the chest so that eventually the hand on the chest stays stationary and you're only moving the belly with breath. And keep doing this until you are able to only move the belly and keep the chest quiet so that all your breath happens at the lower part of the lungs. The diaphragm, the muscle is moving downward and you feel that movement. Now let's start to deepen the breath, bringing the breath into the lungs, feeling that. So take an exhale. Inhale the belly. Inhale to the lower ribs. Inhale to the chest. Exhale from the belly. Lower ribs. Chest. Inhale belly. Lower ribs chest, exhale belly, lower ribs, chest, inhale belly, lower ribs, chest, exhale belly, lower ribs, chest. Continue feeling the hand on the belly rise, feeling the low ribs expand, feeling the hand on the chest rise. Then you exhale from the belly to push the breath out of the body on the exhale. You inhale to the belly to draw the breath in. You exhale from the belly to push the breath out. Go really strong here, moving pretty strongly. Right at your lower ribs, the diaphragm is doing this action, drawing down on the inhale to draw the breath, to suck the breath through the nostrils into your lungs. The exhale, pressing the diaphragm back up towards the lungs, presses the breath out of your body.
Feel this wave-like pattern. Then start to feel your lungs filling up from the bottom, the middle, and the top, emptying from the bottom and the middle and the top. Few more breaths. Keep your mouth closed. Let your body breathe itself, noticing what you notice. Bring your awareness to your fingers and your toes. As you start to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Bring your arms overhead, stretch your body. Press your belly button to your spine. Try to press the low back towards the ground, reaching your arms overhead, stretching. and bend your knees. If you have something underneath your feet, this will be a little easier to bring the soles of the feet together, let the knees go out to the side. So blanket or pillows, elevated feet, a little uh, more gentle on the stretch of the hips. Stretching the adductors, the inner thighs, stretching the front of the hip joint. And one of the muscles that attaches to the inner leg bone is also attached to the lumbar spine. So if you're on the ground without the elevation of the feet, it can be a little tight. You may feel a little uh, pulling up away from the ground of your low back. So really protect the low back in this position here with the soles of the feet together, the knees out. By pressing the belly button of the spine, try to press the low back towards the ground. You may feel the stretch goes into different parts of your hip joint may come into the posterior hip or stay in the anterior. Just experiencing where you are in your body, what's going on, we're all different. We all have different issues in our tissues and we're already aligned different to begin with. Then depending on what your lifestyle is, how often you sit, these muscles will become a little more tight. So letting the soles of your feet touch the knees be out to the side. It's called Baddha Kanasana. This area right here where the legs attach to the body, a lot of lymphatic vessels are here. It's also where your major arteries and veins go down to your feet. So when you have this spread leg position and when you have this flexibility and range of motion in your hip joint, you can actually allow that flow to go through your body better. So if this does feel tight for you, having the elevation 
of the feet away from the ground makes it a little easier. Trying to tilt your pelvis backwards maybe helps to support low back. And then practice this often so that you actually bring in this freedom to this part of your body. Take one more breath. And then to bring the knees together, you could do it with your muscles or you could bring your hands alongside and let your hands help to lift the weight of the leg bones back up. From here, you're going to come onto your side. And then from here, we're going to push away from the ground. So take your hand onto the ground, pushing away with your hand and your arm, bring yourself up to a seated position. One thing that's very interesting that I'm noticing because I am sick and my immune system is creating a lot of mucus. Um, I'm noticing the different body positions, the movement of the fluid in my head, especially. And so it makes me realize even more that this is real, that what we share in yoga, what we say about the practice of yoga is legitimate because I have more fluids to feel them moving around. I feel what's happening in my head from one position to the next. So these different positions we put ourselves in is moving everything around kind of like shaking up a snow globe. And if we allow the sediments of a snow globe to sit at the bottom, then we could see all of that there. But when we start to move our body and do the practice, we actually start to move that stuff around. And then hopefully you have really clear detoxification channels so that your blood and your lymph are moving things to the lungs to breathe out to the kidneys to pee out, to the colon to poop out, or the skin to sweat out, because that's how we release things that are toxic and we need to get rid of. So I'd like to do another breathing technique that can help with detoxification and healing. I have the bolster to sit on. If you don't have a bolster, you could sit in a regular crisscross leg position or, um, Fold up a blanket and put a blanket underneath your tushy. Or if you do have an elevation of a bolster or some pillows, you could um, use a blanket underneath your heels. So we're going to do a breathing technique called Kapalabhati. And we'll do it relatively gently. What we're doing is the diaphragm is the breathing muscle that is around the whole entire lower rib cage. And the thing about your lungs about exhalation and inhalation the respiratory system is one of the main systems that manages acidity in the body and toxicity and so it exhales when we exhale we're releasing carbon dioxide when we inhale we take in oxygen we need this system to be flowing so we're going to do this breath called kapalabhati that actually takes the diaphragm and voluntarily on the exhale pushes the diaphragm up so really interesting thing about breath is that the inhalation is a voluntary action. It is an action of the diaphragm voluntarily drawing downward to draw the breath in the body. The movement of the diaphragm back to its neutral is an involuntary, involuntary recoiling of that muscle. So one is voluntary, one is involuntary, which means that our inhales are what our body is doing to bring breath in, to bring breath in, to bring breath in. And on the exhales, diaphragm moving up is exhale now, exhale now, exhale now, but it's not a voluntary thing. And the practice of yoga, some of the breathing techniques, we take hold of or control of something. And that's um, some of the methods of pranayama. We take control. We're going to take control of our diaphragm here, our muscle that lines the lower rib cage. We're going to voluntarily push it up like a pumping action to push the breath out of the body. So we're going to, sometimes they call this puppy breath because it's like a puppy panting. Exhale, exhale, exhale. This is what we do when we laugh. So try laughing. Ha, 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 A laughter is a ha, 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 ha. It's a movement up, 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 up of the diaphragm. 
It also tonifies the pelvic floor because everything is connected um, with connective tissue. So this, ha, 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 when we laugh, we're going to do it with breath. We're going to keep our mouth closed. We're going to breathe out through our nose. With a Kapalabhati, typically you do a big inhale. And the exhale is... So try that right now. Take a big inhale. So you feel this bouncing action. Bounce, 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 bounce of the diaphragm. So if you like, you could stay here and stay in this position. If going fast makes you dizzy, then go slow. If going fast is okay, then go fast. We're going to do 108. We're going to do 36, 36, 36. You're going to count on your own. Your time will be different than mine. There are hand positions we could use for this if you'd like to join me with that. So the hand positions would be... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Well, that's a good sign, right? Because that means that I'm actually moving mucus that is in my lungs from the sickness. And that's what you want to do. Because if mucus stays in your lungs, it eventually turns to pneumonia. That's what pneumonia is. Pneumonia is that there's so much mucus buildup that there's this um, balance that you cannot, your inhale and exhale can't happen. So understanding that mucus develops in our lungs when we're sick and we want to move it. So Kapalabhati can be a good thing for this. Maybe. I say maybe because you want to make sure that anything you do, you do it with awareness of what you're doing. So the hand positions are this. 36, we're going to do three sets of 36. So one would be here. You're taking your hands and you're bringing your hands low. This is 36 movements here. The next 36 is here. And the next 36 is here. And it, it opens up your lungs in different ways and adds a little bit of a back bend to your spine. So the intention is to get the lower lobes, the middle lobes, and the upper, upper lobes of the lungs. So you do what's appropriate for you. Maybe you're here for your 36, 36, 36. You're counting to 108. Or 36, 36, 36. Okay, so you're going to do whatever is appropriate for you. Give it a try. And then you'll determine like how fast or slow you need to do your breaths. So close your eyes. Find length in your spine when your eyes are closed. Make sure that your head is on top of your spine. Your body weight is coming straight out of your pelvis. Your back neck is nice and long, chin parallel towards the ground. Then take your hands and clasp them if you're going to clasp your hands or leave them on your thighs. Bring your hands out in front of you. Let's take a big exhale. Press all the breath out of the body. And then begin. When you finish your breath, bring your hands onto your thighs. Close your eyes. Notice what's happening inside your body. Notice how you feel. I'm going to gently blink your eyes open. So Kapalabhati, 
moving the diaphragm, noticing what you notice. There's so much to notice here. You can notice your effectiveness of activating your diaphragm. You can notice if one side of your diaphragm works better than the other side of your diaphragm because there's two sides to the diaphragm. You could notice how you feel when you do this. There's a lot of aspects to this. So this would be focusing on extended exhales. So this is carbon dioxide out, carbon dioxide out, carbon dioxide out. And the more you do that, the more you push that carbon dioxide out of your body, then the more opportunity you have for oxygen to come in. Use this to clear, but also you could use this for an energy boost. When I was studying in India, when we would come back from our breaks, we would do 108 Kapalabhatis with the three different hand positions to get our energy to start flowing. So it can be really great energetically to boost, get a little energy boost. All right. So I hope you remember at, at the end, I'd love to hear some of your experiences, if you have any. Um, just want to say a little bit about that for myself. Because my hip replacement's on my left, there's definitely some issues with communication with my muscles. And so I'm so much more aware that my right is just so much more in tuned because there's more to communicate with. So really interesting that I noticed much more right diaphragm movement than I did with the left. So, um, and then also when I did the three part breath, really bringing in throughout my lungs, I really felt that perfusion or that movement from the bottom all the way to the top. So just thinking of those aspects and wondering for yourself, if you're able to get to that place where you have that much body awareness to feel these parts of your body, because when you do, that's when you can really help to heal yourself um, because this is a healing practice. So knowing more about the why and how it works, I think is really great. Let's come on to all fours. Let the body settle here. You can take the hands forward quite a bit and turn the pointer fingers away, moving your body side to side. And then bring your hands directly Underneath your shoulders if you can, and if you still need to be pretty far away, that's okay as well. Take your hands a little wide, take your knees a little wide. Let's move through cat and cow, move up our, our spine. And first, I'd like you to only move the pelvic area and the low back. So imagine that there's a paintbrush taped on to your low spine. There's a paintbrush here, and you're going to start painting a strip of paint up and down the back wall. So there's a paintbrush taped into the middle of your buttock area, and you're gonna start painting down the wall and back up the wall. And the only thing moving is your pelvis. Your pelvis is tilting forward and backwards. For the upper back and neck, if the nose points straight down towards the ground, that's a neutral position for the spine that may feel okay for you. Or you could actually look a little forward and have your head lifted up that'll actually activate upper back and neck muscles. Definitely gonna be more tension, so make sure that feels appropriate for you. And you're painting a strip of paint up and down that back wall, down towards the floor as much as you can. You feel a stretch in your low back, adding lumbar flexion, painting up the wall, coming into lumbar extension. Press your fingertips into the floor a lot. Now you have 24 spine bones that move, two and then two that are in the pelvis, so 26 total. Bring yourself to a neutral position. Let the tip of your nose go straight down towards the ground. Let's begin with the paintbrush, as if we have a paintbrush taped to the back of your body, and start to paint up the back wall. So you paint up the back wall, the top of your pelvis starts to move down to the floor. You have five lower back bones. Push them down towards the ground so you get a deeper extension curve. Then press the lower ribs towards the ground. Start to bend the middle spine, the thoracic, one at a time, really pushing the heart forward. Coming to the top of your rib cage, start to open up your throat, lifting your chin, tailbone up the back wall, chin pointing up the front wall. Extension, take an inhale. Begin with the tailbone painting down the back wall, coming to the lumbar spine, push the lumbar bones up towards the sky, push the belly up towards the spine. 
When you get to the lower ribs, stop there if you have osteoporosis. And if you don't, you could push the middle spine up towards the sky, rounding the middle spine, flexing the middle spine, coming to the neck, pressing the neck up towards the sky. The nose will point down towards your knees. Begin your inhale, tailbone up the back wall. Stomach towards the ground, rib cage moves towards the ground, one vertebra at a time, and then the neck opens. Everyone can do this. This is extension, a back bend. We all need more of this. Then beginning, take a big inhale. As you exhale, start to paint the tailbone down the back wall. Add flexion to the lumbar spine. When you get to the low ribs, stop there with your flexion, if you have osteoporosis and even osteopenia, maybe depending on where you're at and what range of motion you have in your body, you know what to do, what's appropriate for you. Moving through that thoracic and cervical spine with your flexion, and then inhale, start with that tailbone, coming back to the extension. Do a couple of these on your own. Bringing yourself back to center. Bring yourself all the way up. So sitting on your heels if you can, or grabbing your block, putting your block between your ankles and sitting on that, or sitting in a crisscross leg position, whatever you need to do. Take your hands, move your hands. Look at your fingers, moving as many joints as you can. And then take your wrists in one direction and then in the other. Flick your wrists. Take your hands down alongside your body. Inhale to reach up. Exhale down. Inhale. And exhale. One more. And then bring yourself back down. Come to your shoulders. Shoulders are forward, up, back, and down. Forward, up, back, and down. And then bring your awareness to your neck. So these seven spine bones here. Make sure your head is coming right off of your spine. Chin parallel towards the ground, so not up. Let it be parallel. Exhale. Inhale to look over one shoulder. Only the head is moving. Exhale back to center. Inhale to the side. So only move as far as you could look over your shoulder. Bring yourself back to center. Take the ear and you're going to lengthen the side of your neck. So push your ear straight up towards the sky and back to center. So your head literally tips side to side without the chin lifting. So the chin without it lifting, meaning that you're not trying to go like this to get down and try to lift. That's adding the rotational movement. You want it to be a lengthening from side to side. Bringing yourself back to center. Teeth are together, take an inhale. Exhale, chin to chest. Inhale, chin up. Exhale, chin to chest. 
and chin up. And then bring yourself back to neutral. So let's go down on the ground. Take your block to the side, your strap to the side. Bring your blanket up to the top of your mat. <coughs> bring yourself down onto the ground. All the way onto your back. Your blanket is underneath your head. And then draw your knees into your chest. Roll side to side. Then let your legs go up to the sky. Let your hands go up. Really shake your body here. Let everything settle. Bring your feet onto the ground and bring your heels onto the mat and your toes off. Take your arms out to the side, either straight or bend your elbows. Keep your feet, your soles of your feet on the ground. Start to move your knees side to side and keep your pelvis on the ground. So you're not tilting your pelvis yet. You're letting your legs move side to side. Feel the hips. Start to go a little bigger. Now you can let the soles of the feet come off the ground. Bring yourself back up to center. Take your feet wider, so off the mat, and start going side to side. Think about your legs being as far away from your rib cage as possible. So push your legs away as they go to the side, and then bring your awareness to your sacrum on the ground, the very center of the pelvic area. Feel that that area of you staying on the ground, and then notice how the sides of the pelvis come up. So try not to let the sacrum rock off. You're not trying to get to the ground, moving your body strongly because that's going to be too strong of a rotational force. And that goes right into the low back without awareness and gives the low back way more work to do than it needs to. So really isolating this so that you could be more flexible in your twists so that you could be safe when you do them because twisting can be amazing for health health in the spine, health in the body, helps to ring out a lot of aspects of our physical body. Want to make sure we're doing it safe. So the center of your sacrum is on the ground when you're doing this. Then come over to the left. Now feel the left buttock the most on the ground. So the sacrum is not really making that real strong connection. Take the right arm, reach the right arm long, reach the right kneecap long. Stretch the right side of your body, push the right hip straight up towards the sky. Take one more breath. Then you're going to bring yourself back up to center. We're going to go to the right now. Let the knees go to the right. Let the left hand reach long. Flex the left wrist. Push the left knee away from you and push the left hip straight up towards the sky, stretching the left side of your body. Take one more breath. And then bring yourself back to center. Push your feet into the ground. Lift your pelvis up. Let your pelvis lift off the ground. So now we're going to isolate the upper body and we're going to do rotation in the upper body, trying to really rotate the thoracic spine. So get your block. 
you bring your block over to the right side. Draw your knees into the chest and let your knees come over to the right. So you're rolling onto your side. And then take the block and bring the block in between either the ankles or the knees, whatever feels better for you. And then cradle your head in your right arm. Take the blanket, move the blanket. You could do the blanket too. You could even fold the blanket a little bit more if you wanted to. And then bring the knees so that they're directly off of the hips. Knees are coming directly off the hips. And try to get your knees to be in alignment. So one kneecap is on top of the other. You don't have the top left leg pulling back more. You have your knee knees on top of each other. Then your block is there for reference. So if you squeeze your block, you feel some activation of the lower body muscles. Take the left hand that's on top. Bring the left hand down alongside your body. Inhale. And then exhale. Bring your hand forward. Really reach the hand forward so you feel the stretch in the upper back. When you get to the top of your body, inhale begins here. Turn your palm up. Move your arm as long as you can, reaching as long as you can to stretch your body. You inhale when you come forward. Sorry, you exhale forward. Inhale back. Squeeze the block and try to keep the knees in alignment. This will affect the range of motion of your arms. So squeeze that block, inhale. One more. And then bring yourself forward. Bring your hand onto the ground in front of you. So this is called, like, we're gonna make like a rainbow arc on the floor above us, keeping our hand as close to being connected to the floor as you can. Not everybody will be able to stay connected to the floor, so try. Take your hand forward, exhale, inhale, squeeze your block, look at your knees, and then as you exhale, let your hand go over, and then inhale, opening, try to keep your hand on the ground the whole way if you can. Your knees may move a little if they need to for you to go a little farther. Just pay attention to what's happening. And then exhale back. Inhale, let the hands go up and over. Exhale back. Inhale, reach long, reach up and away. And then one more. This time you're going to stay there for a whole breath at the end. Take an inhale. And then exhale back to center. So you'll feel a lot of opening here. Now really isolating that middle spine here. So take your hands. You're going to clasp your hands behind your head. Clasping your hands behind your head. Elbows are forward. I want you to think of this part here. So the rotation. This is not about how far do you get over to the side. This is about how much can I feel the stretch here in this part of my chest, the thoracic spine. So squeeze the block. Knees are coming straight off of your body. Exhale. Let's begin. Inhale. Reach up with the elbow. Slide the shoulder blade towards the spine. Push your heart forward. Continue to open as far as you can. Squeezing the block. Placing your arm towards the ground. Opening up. And then exhale to close. Make sure this feels okay for you in your body. Tailbone down. Belly button to spine. Inhale. Slide that shoulder blade towards your spine as you open. Try to get as much stretch as you can. There's a lot of, not a lot of range of motion here. So you'll feel a lot of the tightness.
one bar. Stay here, push your heart forward, squeeze your block, push your belly button to your spine. Letting your elbow go, press the right elbow into the floor, left elbow back, press your heart forward. That left shoulder blade helps to safely rotate the thoracic spine. Take one more breath. And then bring yourself back to center. Take the block out. Bring yourself onto your back. Bring your knees into your chest. And then we're going to go to the other side. I'm actually going to move, shift my position. So rolling onto the left side now. Take the block in between your legs. Looking at your kneecaps, getting those in alignment. Either folding the blanket or using your hand behind your head. Find what feels better for you. Bring your hand down alongside your body. Exhale and inhale. Make sure your knees are coming straight off of your pelvis as you begin to exhale to come forward. Inhale to go back. See if you could keep your knees on top of each other stacked without that upper leg going as you move back. You inhale when you come back, stay there. Stay here, push your heart forward, feel that stretch in the arm, the shoulder, make sure it's appropriate. If you have shoulder issues, straight arm might not be the best thing for you. You may need to bend your elbow. So do what's appropriate for you. Know where you're at in your body. Take one more breath. And then bring yourself out. So to make the arc across on the top of our head, bringing your right hand forward, exhale. Begin your inhale to reach up and open, trying to stay on the ground as long as you can, maybe the whole way. Exhale to come back. Squeeze your block. On the next one, you're going to stay there. Stay open. For posture, for alignment, for spinal health, for shoulder health, to be able to take deeper breaths, to help support detoxification, energy production. Inhale. And exhale to come back to center. Take your 
hand, hand behind your head, clasping your hands. Exhale. Inhale, let your elbow go up, slide the shoulder blade towards your spine, push your heart forward, and open your heart. Exhale to close. Make sure you feel the elbow go up, the shoulder blade go towards the spine, and open your heart. One more. Stay here. Slide that shoulder blade towards your spine. Press the shoulder blade forward to help facilitate that stretch, that rotational force. Take one more breath. and then bring yourself out. Take the block off the side, come onto your back. <clears throat> Push your feet into the ground, lift your pelvis up, and then draw your knees into your chest. Put your feet down. So let's take the strap, bring the feet up into the air, put the strap on both feet, and then take the feet a little wider than your body. Wrap your hands around your strap. Pushing your soles up towards the sky. You can have your knees bent or straight up to you. And then guide your legs back so you feel a pretty strong stretch where your legs attach to your body. Pushing out on the pinky toe edges so you'll feel that in your hip joint. Reaching your legs back. Then if they are straight, bend your legs. Reach them back a little more, getting into the belly of the hamstring. And then bring yourself up. Take your legs wide and then bend your knees towards your shoulders. This is happy baby. Soles of the feet are up towards the sky. Compressing the area where the legs attach to the body. It's a lot of still keeping that openness for the flow of the major veins and arteries. There's a lot of lymphatic vessels here. Get a nice deep compression. Feel the low back pressing into the ground. This is usually releasing and relieving for low back. Take one more breath. And then take your strap off to the side. Bring your hands behind your head. Let's do a little spinal undulation. Beginning with the pelvic area, press the belly button to the spine, press the low back to the floor, point the tailbone up away from you, and then bring yourself to neutral. Inhale, and as you exhale, tilt your pelvis back, flatten your low back into the ground. Press your elbows into the ground when you do this. Rock all the way forward to your tailbone, and then flatten the lower back. undulating your spine. Let's add the upper body on your next exhalation, flattening the low back, bringing your upper body up off the ground. Stay with the nose up towards the sky if you have osteoporosis. And if you don't, you can bring the elbows towards each other, bring the chin towards the chest. Inhale to lower. Osteoporosis version, the tip of the nose is up towards the sky. You don't want to 
flex the thoracic spine or flex if you can. One more. Bring yourself down. Let's bring the knees into the chest. Hold on to your knees. Then let the legs go up into the sky. Let's inhale to point the feet. Exhale to flex. Inhale. Exhale. The more strongly you move, the more you stretch the calves, the front of the feet. This is important. Keep your ankles limber for fall prevention. Then slow circles in one direction. Legs are wider than the body here. And then circles in another direction. And then shake your legs. Let's bend and unbend the ankles. Bring your arms up in the air. Bring your legs up in the air. Let your legs be pretty wide. Arms are pretty wide. Shake everything. Let your feet go onto the floor. Hands on the belly. Close your eyes. Check in. See how you're feeling. We're going to come into Shavasana. So from here, find whatever position is appropriate for you. If you have a bolster or something that you want to bring back, bring that back underneath your knees.
Gently begin to deepen your breath. Start to wiggle your fingers, your toes. Gently bend the knees and draw the knees into the chest. Bring yourself onto the side. Then from here, push yourself up to a seated position. Hands together at the heart. Press the heart to the hands, hands to the heart. We'll close with a gentle humming sound. Take an exhale. Inhale. Bowing in gratitude, namaste, thank you. And then noticing how you feel. We did do a lot of twisting today, which actually can stimulate relaxation, which is really good for healing as well. So noticing after each practice how you feel so that you can be safe and stay safe when you're practicing. All right. <coughs> so we'll see. Hopefully all this makes me heal quicker. That's the goal. Um, so I'd love to know how you're all feeling. That was nice and gentle. Nancy, I hope that was good for you. Does anyone want to tell me how they feel? I'd love to hear. Oh yeah, thanks Stevie. I know, gosh. One thing that's amazing when you're sick is I just like crave feeling good. So it's just very interesting um, when you are sick to think about, oh wow, it's gonna feel great to feel good again. All right. Um, so thank you, ladies. I am going to go and yeah, twisting is good, Lynn, really good and really healing. So, um, all right. Well, I hope you all feel good. Thank you. All right, ladies. Um, until we meet again, stay safe and stay healthy. <laughs> Bye.